Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Tony, and I'm a homeschooling mom to four kids. And we're gonna talk today about something in the motherhood pocket, the actually womanhood pocket of our life. I like to talk about all kinds of stuff. We talk about homeschooling, I talk about thrifty stuff, and I talk about motherhood and just, you know, sometimes there's stuff that we're dealing with or we need encouraged by. And I hope that this will be one of those things that encourages us just as a Christian woman out there trying to navigate the world and do the best we can for ourselves and for our kids. So I hope that this video will be an encouragement to you. So stick around if you wanna hear what I have to say. <sighs> Let's get chatting. I already had a video filmed that I was gonna put up for Monday. I already have it mostly edited, but this is kind of on my heart right now. And I just wanted to kind of share my feelings. So we're gonna go this route instead. Sometimes I guess you gotta to listen to the Lord's leading and see what is it that he's telling you and you don't wanna squash that. So we're gonna to talk today about social media. <laughs> okay. I'm sure we have a wide range of moms and ages here that watch my channel. So some of you guys might be like super young in your 20s. I think there might be a chunk, a big chunk of ladies that are probably maybe 30 to 40. And then there, I know there's some that are older too. Doesn't matter how old you are. Social media is, uh, let's see, awesome in some ways. It can be really great. It can be a great tool. It's also obnoxious and it can be really discouraging. So there's like pluses and minuses of social media and whether we like it or not, it's here to stay. It's not going away. So I feel like we need to really understand um, how to approach social media in an encouraging and appropriate way that, uh, that glorifies the Lord. If you are a Christian, and that is, uh, that's good for you and feeds you and doesn't tear you down. So I'm not talking about a specific platform here. Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram is what I'm on, but it can be really great. It can be a good tool. YouTube, I love YouTube. YouTube is really great and it's a great way for me to share things that might be able to encourage you and help you in your homeschooling journey and your journey as a mom. If you look at it with the wrong eyes, it can tear you down and that's why I wanna talk about this. So I was talking to a friend the other day uh, and, and we were talking about um, Instagram and like as a YouTuber wanting to make sure we're, I don't know, our social media presence is helping our YouTube channel, you know, stuff like that. And I mentioned one, an, a mom that I follow on Instagram and I said, I love her stuff. It's like, there's tons of people on Instagram who are like amazing at showing what showing their strengths and showing, you know, the, the beauty of homeschooling. Homeschooling isn't always beautiful. Not all of us have the aesthetically pleasing, amazing matching everything, homeschool room, you know, all the little manipulatives that, that go with your theme and all that stuff. Some people do, and that is awesome. Okay, here's the question. When I look at that person, or if I look at, you know, any of the people on Instagram, am I intimidated by them or am I inspired by them? Because you have those two choices. You, I mean, there was probably times where you're, you're just like scrolling through for just, you know, pleasure, wasting time, you know, stuff like that. But in general, if you're looking at a homeschool mom and she's got it all together and everything matches and she has this beautiful homeschool room and her kids, you know, look picture perfect and she always looks picture perfect. Do you look at her? Are you intimidated? Are you inspired? Because a lot of times, I will be totally honest with you, I lean towards being intimidated. I've always struggled with insecurity. Even as a teenager, I always struggled with being insecure in who I was. And even as an adult, you think, man, she's been around for so long. She has a 13 year old, you know, she's got four kids. She still struggles with being intimidated. I do. And I'm sure we all do if we could be honest about it. I feel like we play the comparison game. And I have said before, don't compare your kids to other kids. I don't compare my kids to other kids. I, I guess 90% of the time I don't compare my kids to other kids. There's times though where I do, it can slide in and you can say, oh man, they know that? My kid doesn't know that. You know, if, if like something comes up in conversation or like, oh, that, that kid is so good at piano. Why didn't I make my kids stick with piano? There's so many things that you can compare your kids to and I try so hard not to do that. But you know what's really hard? is comparing yourself. Because as a mom, 
I, it's just, I don't know. Maybe you guys don't struggle with this as much as I do, but playing the comparison game is dangerous. If you're gonna look at somebody who has it all together, she doesn't have it all together, I promise but who appears to have it all together. If her, her Instagram photos look perfect and blah, 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 she probably knows the right angle. She probably has the right lighting. She probably has a filter on. I do not put filters on my videos, by the way, but I get to where I've got direct sunlight and it helps me out. Uh, it just makes things a little nicer, but I'm trying to be real here, but I do struggle. When I, when I look at other moms sometimes, I'm like, oh man, you know, I wish I could wear that dress or I wish I, you know, whatever. Be inspired instead. Choose to be inspired. So there's so many facets of this. We're, t we're talking about the way people look right now. If I see someone and I'm like, man, she looks so good in that dress. I wish I could wear that. Well, guess what? I've been wanting to start, oh, I just spit. I've been wanting to get healthy for quite a while and it's been hard for me and I've been in kind of a slump. Take that and be like, you know what? I want to get a dress like that and I want to fit in it and I want to be able to rock it. So I'm going to let that inspire me and I'm going to try to start working out or I'm going to try to, you know, start eating healthier, whatever it is. So that's one way to do it. You need to be happy with who you are. God made you who you are. You know, I tell my girls this, having three girls, I know how big this is and how important this is. I try really hard not to ever talk about um, my weight and things like that in front of my girls because I don't want them to I don't want them to think that that is like the focus because it's not. You need to be proud of who you are and who God made you, but you can still be inspired to do more. We can always do better with all kinds of things. We can always do better. With homeschooling, you can see that mom who has the most amazing homeschool room and you can be intimidated by it and you can wish you had it and think, oh, my stuff doesn't match. Be inspired by it. What can you do? Here's an example, the other day, now this isn't exactly homeschooling, but with my living room. I, I'm a thrifter, so in general, I don't really have a lot of matchy-matchy stuff. I try to like make stuff to go together, but I have never gone to uh, like Pottery Barn. Do they sell furniture? I don't know, I've never been there. But okay, let's say Pottery Barn. I've never been to Pottery Barn and just been like, okay, I'll take all that, you know? I'll take the lamp that goes with the table, that goes with the chair, that goes with the, couch and the love seat blah 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 and all this stuff and then put it in your living room and everything looks perfect i've never done that so i i do have a matching couch and love seat but that's about the extent of it everything else has kind of been thrown together and i try to make it go together anyway i was at a friend's house the other day well she pretty much had like the pottery barn house like gorgeous furniture like we popped in on them when they weren't expecting us and which would terrify most of us, right? <laughs> and her house looked amazing. And so at first I, I started to think like, oh, I wish my house looked like this. And oh, I wish all my stuff matched. I wish my house was like super clean when, ever, when somebody popped by. And then I stopped myself and I'm like, no, I'm gonna take her house as inspiration. So I went home and first of all, I actually loved the setup in her living room. I took what I already had, my living room couch and my living room love seat, and I rearranged it just like hers was and it's a way i've never rearranged and i rearranged all the time and then i found this other thing that i had in the kitchen and i used it as kind of like an end table which i've never used it that way before her living room was my inspiration i bought nothing i bought nothing new but i used what she had and it inspired me to kind of just tweak mine and i love it i love my living room right now so anyway that's just like a tiny thing but i tried to like declutter i got I just, you know, put all the candles together and then having, instead of having them all over the living room, I don't know, it worked. And just that little bit of inspiration really brought some, some just like refreshing joy into just into my house. And so when you see those homeschool rooms, you might have a ton of mismatched stuff. You may not have all the, you know, matchy fancy stuff. Take that as inspiration if you, unless you're totally satisfied with your stuff, then leave it as it is. But sometimes that's where I will rearrange or I will just, you know, if you see that, oh man, I'm so, my stuff is so cluttered in our school room. I have like a pile, go clean up the pile. Take it that like a little bit at a time, but take that as inspiration just to, to try to do better. Does that make sense? Make sure that instead of being intimidated and being like, oh, I'm never going to be like that. Do the best you can with what you have and you can just take it as inspiration and challenge yourself to, 
to just change things. When my friend and I were talking about this the other day, this is another thing that came up and I had said, how do these ladies have like all this matching stuff? Like, have you ever seen those moms on Instagram, the homeschool moms who like do unit studies? So they'll have, um, you know, they're studying squirrels. So they have this layout on the table with all these cutouts of squirrels, these pictures of squirrels, and then all these different nuts on the table, the squirrel toys, and then this sensory bin with squirrel things in it and trees and all this stuff. And I'm thinking, that would take me forever. I don't have all that stuff. It would cost so much money for all that work for just one little like discussion on squirrels one morning. Okay, so that's normally where my mind goes. But guess what? First of all, this is what my friend brought up. She's like, a lot of those people on Instagram are sent that stuff. Uh, they're like, part. they partner with companies. The company sends them this gift, this like box that, that goes with, that's like a theme, you know? And you may have done those unit boxes before. I have never done those before, but it comes with all the stuff. So don't look at that and think that that mom puts all this into it. She may have been sent, not there, you know, some of them might actually put all that into it, but she may have been sent or may have just ordered or whatever that box that has all the squirrel stuff in it. And then all she did was set it on the table. It still takes effort, but don't think that just because this mom has all this stuff that makes everything so pretty and all you do is take out a workbook you're still putting into your kid what you need to put into your kid. This is one area where I'm not necessarily gonna be inspired to start making a big squirrel table for our school day every day. I, I, I don't have the desire to do that. It's really pretty. To me, that's not something that we need in our school room. So you've gotta decide. I'm not gonna be intimidated by that. I'm also not necessarily gonna be inspired by that because that's not something that we need. So choose if you wanna be intimidated or inspired, but also you might just look at it appreciate it that's really cool and then move on so that's kind of a third option there you don't have to change anything you can be happy with who you are with how you do it listen as a homeschool mom if you are putting your heart into your kids and you're doing the best you can keep doing it you don't need to feel bad so if it's dangerous for you and your heart to be on scrolling on Instagram and it just makes you feel bad, get off of it. If you can, just take it as a piece of inspiration to do better. I really feel like sometimes I get in a slump where I'm not really inspired to change anything and I'm just kind of, you know, even whether it's with my diet or with my homeschool or with, you know, my house or whatever it is. but. So sometimes you need that inspiration. And when I cleaned my whole living room and my kitchen and all the dishes were put away and like the living room was rearranged, it was so refreshing. It was like amazing. I just want to make sure as moms and as women, we are not constantly being intimidated by all these things around us who a lot of it isn't real. These filters aren't real. You guys know all this. Those ladies don't really look like that. You know, uh, if it wasn't for the glare, I would be having my glasses on right now, but the glare of the sun was driving me crazy. But <laughs> just, I don't know. I, I just want to encourage you. And I hope that this does encourage you to try to do better. You don't have to start looking like everybody else. Your kids don't have to look like everybody else. Don't be afraid to be inspired and to change things and to do a little bit more, but don't feel intimidated. Don't let that trap you in a box and feel like you're not good enough because we are good enough. God made us who we are. He gave you the kids he gave you. He gave you the husband that he gave you. He chose them for you. He chose this job for you, this ministry for you to do homeschooling the way that he has told you to do it. We can learn, it's a learning process. I learn something every year about homeschooling. Really, probably every month I learn something new. Here's one more example. Do you like examples? I hope so. Okay, here's here's one thing. We talked about like the aesthetic, like uh, the unit study type of thing. Here's another way you can be intimidated. I started reading this book, what's it called? Uh, something of Wild and Free. Call of the Wild and Free, am I saying it wrong? I don't remember. Anyway, I just started reading it. You guys probably know what it is, it's a pretty popular book. I'll put it here since I keep saying the name wrong. But I'm reading this book and I've, I've heard of people that do it and they go out in nature every day and their kids are just so free, they don't wear shoes, they, I don't know. Okay, that's my, that's my interpretation of it. I'm sure they wear shoes sometimes. But these kids are like so free and so like, 
they love nature, they probably, they're so creative, all this stuff. And, and I was intimidated by that. I actually didn't read this book for a long time because I kept thinking like, oh, I'm, I'm not, I can't be like that. I'm not, I'm, a, I'm more of a structure person. And I was afraid, I think, that, that hearing about that was gonna, first of all, intimidate me some more, and then was gonna make me feel like, now I've gotta add that to my schedule. <laughs> So we've got all the other subjects. We've got our morning basket. We've got all the things that we need to do. Now we need to go on a nature walk every day. You don't have to do that. But I am still reading the book, even though I don't plan on becoming a barefoot family that frolics through the woods every day. I do want to bring some of that into our homeschool. And just, I, I think it's good to challenge ourselves to have some of these other things. I mean, God made us all different for a reason and we can learn from each other and bring that in. So I am still reading this book. And I'm hoping to draw some good ideas from it. It doesn't, We, I guarantee you, we are not going on a nature walk every day. We're just not, that's not me. But, and those moms that do that are probably may not sit down and do workbooks every day. And that's fine. We can still be inspired by each other. I hope that example kind of helps and makes sense. Don't compare yourself to other moms, but don't be afraid to be inspired by other moms. God's made us all different. I love, that even my friends that I that you know I have no friend that is just like me they'd probably be really annoying if they were <laughs> just like this is kind of a battle for me with insecurity social media is just all around and it's gonna be around for our kids and that's a little scary because some of it is should go down the toilet and is awful but there are some good things and if we use it to inspire ourselves and then we teach our kids to do that and to choose the right things choose the right people to follow whenever i do decide to let my daughter on social media i don't know when that'll be but i want to teach her how to use it as a tool and not to be intimidated by it because i guarantee there's a lot of people that are majorly intimidated and it ends up being a really bad downward spiral so I hope this was a fun little talk. Did you guys like this? I hope, I don't know. I just thought it was a good topic and it very relevant for anybody because we're all you know, into social media. Uh, whether you like it or not, unless you live you know, in a cabin in the woods and your kids are barefoot. <laughs> I'm just kidding, <laughs> totally kidding. Uh, but for the most part, you know, we're all gonna be interacting with social media in some way. I really appreciate you guys being here and I loved all the feedback from my Q&A that I did last week. I'll link that above if you guys didn't get to see that. Just a way to get to know me a little bit better. But give me a thumbs up if you like this video, please. And don't forget to subscribe if you're not yet subscribed so you don't miss any of my videos. Be inspired, okay? See you next time.